forgiving and asking forgiveness <clears throat> are two things that I think are probably most important in leading to a better death. I mean, you know, there, are, there are people who have good deaths, but a better death, an easier death. And there are two issues that, that need to be addressed directly. I don't want to die alone, Ned said, and then waited for my response. Would you like me to be with you when it happens? He smiled and then went back to sleep. I came back the next day. Carl, I'm so glad you came, Ned said to me with his head still on the pillow. I could see that his eyes weren't focusing and I had no idea who Carl was. It's me, Ned. It's Stan. You remember from yesterday? I thought you wouldn't come back. I told you I would. I know it's been hard on you, he said barely above a whisper. No, I enjoyed coming to visit you, Ned. You were right in telling me to leave. Ned, it's me, Stan, not Carl. I shouldn't have asked you to take me in. I didn't have the right to ask anything from you. A father shouldn't do that to his son. I stopped insisting I was Stan. I didn't know what to say as he waited for me to respond. I knew insisting I wasn't his son wouldn't make any sense. For one thing, given his level of delusion, he wouldn't believe it. And secondly, he needed his son right there next to him. But I did, did I have the right to assume that role? I took a deep breath and said, it's all right what you did, Dad. No, it wasn't. I haven't seen you or your mom in 20 years, and here I am asking you for a place to stay, even asking you to care for me. You were right in telling me to find some other place. As I struggled for the next thing to say, his eyes seemed to focus, and he said, I forgive you. Then, just as quickly as the delusion began, it ended in a peaceful look as he drifted off to sleep. Asking for forgiveness is just as fundamental. I was with a woman who left her husband and two adolescent daughters many years ago. And she left them for uh, a relationship with another woman. And for all of that time, her children, who now are adults, refused to have any contact with her. And they knew she was dying, and they still refused to talk to her. So as we were having one of our sessions, she said to me, you know, I'm ready to die with one exception. I need to be forgiven by my children. And she knew that wasn't possible. So I said to her, I said, well, let's try something. Let's write a forgiveness letter. And she said, but they won't read it. I said, no, not now. But I promise you that they will get it after you died. So for three weeks, we worked on this letter of forgiveness. And we would start. And then she'd say, no, no, I don't want that. So she would talk and I would write. And we would cross out things and, and go in back and forth. And after three weeks, she finally had something that she was satisfied with. And on the letter, this is what it said. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I've always loved you. Please forgive me for anything that I've done that you couldn't accept. And that was it. Um, with that, she was able to start getting, preparing herself for death. And her kids never did see that until after she died. Uh, but it was, it was the, the act of doing that was important for her. Mm -hmm.